Hello everyone, welcome back. We are now getting started with the coding for Ghost Hunt. So if you want, you can watch this video as you do your coding or you can choose to finish watching the video, then you try your coding. Okay, so let's get started. Now, first things first, sign in to your class account. Please don't forget. Once you are done, click on create. I need you to use the class account so that I can check your work, okay? Once you've created a new project, change the title of it. We're going to give it your name and the title of this game. So we're going to do Ghost Hunt today. All right, so your name and the title of today's project, Ghost Hunt. Once done, delete off the cap. We're going to add our two sprites, the witch and the ghost, and a backdrop of a night city. So I'm going to start with the backdrop first. Going to do a search for night city. Okay, you can also choose your own, that's fine. Choose a sprite, let's add our witch and our ghost sprite now. Now don't worry if the sprites look a bit big because we are able to change size later. Okay, so we got our two sprites here. Let's start by coding the background music for our game. I'm going to do that on the stage. So I click the stage. I'm going to go to the sounds tab. I don't want this pop sound. This is too short. Delete the pop. Add a new sound. I'm going to look for a video game sound. Sounds good. Let's use this. So this sound is called video game one. Okay, once you have added it in, go back to your code panel. We are going to add the code for background music. So when green flag is click, when the game starts, forever, we are going to play the sound, video game one, until it's done. And then we repeat the whole code again. Okay, so this, this music will last throughout your whole game. All right, now we're going to move on to the witch. Click onto the witch sprite. Now this is your chance to change size. Look at the sprite box. There is a size box here. So let's change instead of 100, we have it to 50. Okay, so it's a bit smaller. Just nice. Okay, once done, we're going to add the code for moving the witch using arrow keys. So when green flag is click, okay, I'm going to set the starting position first. So I'm going to move my witch somewhere here at the bottom left corner. I'm going to create my own position. Go to X, let's make a nice number, minus 200, Y minus 100. Uh, so the witch will start at this bottom corner here. What's next? We're going to add our arrow key controls. Forever, remember our conditionals, if and then. So if, sensing, if a key is pressed, what kind of key? Let's start with the up arrow. If up arrow is pressed, then we are going to go to motion change y by 10 okay if you forgot about this look over here x and y x refers to up and down position x is left and right so since you are going up we're changing the y okay by a positive number 10. now let's copy the up arrow code we're going to make a down arrow one right click duplicate put it under your up arrow let's change this to down so if key down arrow press, then we're going to change the direction. Instead of going up, it's going to be down, minus 10. Change Y by minus 10. This means opposite of up. Okay? Now let's do left and right. Remember, left and right is change X, so we got to use a different block. Okay? Again, I duplicate my code. Change to the right arrow. Delete this block. Pull out a change X block. Okay? Duplicate this right arrow code. Pop it at the bottom. Now change it to a left. This is the last movement. Left arrow, change X by minus 10. Because this goes opposite. Okay, so this should be your, oops, this should be your whole code. Up, down, left, and right. Make sure you check your code properly before you actually test out your whole game. Okay? Up, down, right. Okay, great. It works well. So let's move on to our ghost sprite now. I'm clicking onto the ghost sprite. Now is your chance to change the size. So let's change it to 50. Okay, now we're going to make this ghost sprite hide itself at the start, then glide randomly around forever. So to do this, bring out your green flag click block. So for your ghost, when green flag is click, let's go to looks. We're going to hide the ghost first. 
Okay, and then we are going to make it forever motion glide to a random position. Okay, once it has chosen its position, it's going to show itself. Sorry, wrong block. Show itself. Okay, so it should look like this. Okay, now let's make our game more interesting. We're going to add some interactions between the ghost and the witch. And we're also going to add in a score variable. So let's get started with that. Okay, I'm going to first create my score variable. So go to this new group called variables. Click on the button make a variable. Okay, to this variable, the first one we're going to call it score. It's going to be for all the sprites. Okay. Now, immediately when you add it in, you should see this box here. You can easily shift this box around to wherever you want it. Okay? Now, let's get started the coding. When green flag is clicked, we are first going to go to variables, set our score to zero. Okay? We start at zero. Then, what happens next? Forever, if, now, if, since we are controlling the ghost, if the ghost touches, under sensing, uh, touches the witch, if the ghost touches the witch, then what's going to happen is, we are going to change the score by 1. Okay, so this means we plus 1 to your score. Alright, so that the, win, the witch earns a point. Okay, and let's make it special. We're going to make the ghost pop and disappear. So let's go to sounds. Delete off this sound. We're going to add a very short sound that is just a quick pop. Okay, go back to code. All right, once the score has changed, we're going to start the sound pop. And then we're going to very quickly hide the ghost. Okay, and after the ghost has hidden, it's going to glide to a random position before it finally shows itself again. Okay, so we have to add this in to make sure that the ghost hides itself immediately after it touches the witch. Okay, so your code should look something like this. Let's test this out. Okay, so do you see that? Every time I touch the ghost, it pops and the score increases by 1. So great, it works. Lastly, let's add a bit more challenge to our game. We're going to add a timer, a countdown timer. So for this, I'm going to do the coding on the ghost sprite. I'm going to find an empty space. Okay. Go back to variables. We're going to make a new variable again. We're going to call it time for all the sprites. Okay. So since this is a countdown timer, we're going to set the time to start at 20 seconds. We're going to count down from 20 to 0 seconds. Okay, so again, at your green flag click control. When green flag click, the time is going to be started from 20 seconds. Then what's going to happen? How do we do a countdown? Forever, we're going to wait one second. After each second, we are going to change the time by minus one. Okay, this means that we're going to wait after each second minus one. Now everyone, I made a little mistake here. Okay, instead of forever, we're going to delete this. We're going to use the repeat block. Repeat 20 times because we want the time to go from 20 to 0. So repeat 20 times of minus 1. Okay, then it will go to 0. What happens after this code? When it reaches 0, we want to end the game. Stop all. Okay, so this is our time code, the completed one. Zoom out to show you everything. Alright, so this is for your goals. If you're ready, you can hit the green flag and test it out. Time is zero, game over, the whole game will freeze. If you want to play again, just click the green flag to play again. Alright? Simple. So everyone, have fun with your coding today and your game. Save your work. Don't forget, file, save now.
Okay, wait for the project to say project save, then you do your sign out. Okay, all right, so that's all for this week. Once you're done, go back to eCampus and finish up the short reflection. Okay, bye.